This is my crane painting, and I'm going to show you how to paint this crane. I have two brushes. I have a um, fine line brush, and I have an OAS small brush. And I have ink, and I have red paint. So first I take my fine line brush and I dip it in my ink. And I make sure that it's not too wet. Get rid of all the excess, have my paper towel handy. And I can use my fingernail to estimate where my crane will go. So I can do a little circle for the head, a little S shape for the neck, a little egg shape for the body, and then a couple of strokes here with the number four for the feet. Here we go. And it helps me position it. Mm -hmm. So in front of this egg shape, I'm going to put the beak. And it's a sideways V. And to help me, I put my wrist down. Press. There's my beak. Okay. And I can put in my eye. My eye is a little bit above the center line of the beak. And it's a dot. And I hold my brush until it bleeds a little bit into the paper so I can get a dot. And then I'll do a little line through that so it'll be more. Almond shape. Okay. Wet my brush, get lots of color on my brush, lots of ink, because this is a very distinctive part of the crane. And that's that S shape. And I can test it on a piece of paper to make sure it's dark enough. Get rid of all that excess. And I come in and I surround the eye with the black. I come in a little bit here and then there. And notice that I'm trying to get a little bit of control. So my hand is very close to the handle. Press, get that cheek, and come around. And there's up to the body, and I let go. Now I can spread my bristles out a little bit and dry off the brush even more. Look at all that extra stuff I have there. Dry off my brush, spread it open. I like that stroke, but if I wanted to have a little more dry feathery strokes here, I can do that. Now I can come back in using my fine line brush and I'm going to have gray ink, lighter ink than I just painted the neck. I'm going to get the other side of the head and the neck. I'm going to leave a space right here for that red dot that's so prominent of and representative of the crane. And just nice, nice wispy strokes here. Get the body. 
leave space here because I'm going to paint the wings here black come in and maybe even leave a little space here for the legs to come through. This is the feathers that cover the leg. Okay. And go back in with my small flow brush, load it up with black ink again, nice and dark. And remember the um, example that Barb showed us, the body is the same length as the head and neck, and that's the same length as the feet, but a third of that, a third of this body here, egg-shaped body, is going to be the length of our wing feathers that are black. Okay. And we want to have them come towards a similar space here. So I like to paint my wings and my tail coming back in. But if you find it better to go that way, that's fine. Now that I have my brush ready, I'm going to paint my legs. I'm going to point it a little bit, get rid of any extra. You want to have nice, strong legs. Here's the body of the bird. That's how long it should be. So I'm going to come up into these feathers. Bend, hesitate, come down like that. Here's where the other leg might be. And I can do the same muscle there. Or I can have the leg bent, that would be fun. So that would be from the other side. Say bent. Coming up into here and bending like that. I like that little flying white. And I can use my fine line brush or I can use my regular flow brush to do the toes. There's a spur here. And one comes out straight. The others are curved. Chicken foot, right? Only birds have chicken feet. There we go. Okay. Come back in with my flow brush. Dipped in very concentrated Japanese gonsai paints. This is a nice red, and it's hard to get from anywhere else. A Schminky has a nice red too that you can also get from Oriental Art Supply. What number is that red? Do you know? This is number nine. Nine, thank you. Oh, or six. <laughs> Sorry, I'm reading it upside down, Alice. I'll look later. Nine or six. Nine or six, yes. All right, so here's um, how I practiced getting the cap, right? So in one stroke, we can have it rounded and we hesitate and pull. Rounded, hesitate, pull. So we can get this little bit of a... Um, sharpness at the top. 
rather than a semicircle, which would be like that, right? My bird. Come up to where the beak is. Pull, hesitate, come back. And then if you want to, you can take a little bit of yellow and um, paint in your beak, or you can just leave it like that. Um, I think his beak is a little short, so I'm going to elongate it with some color here. I have OAS colors. This is the larger uh, companion set. And I'm using the yellow ochre. And then going over that line that I created to elongate my beak. Okay. And that's it. Thank you. Okay, so we have our, our crane. And I want to add a little bit of a pine boughs here. And um, I don't want to block him here. But I want to make sure that I have this uh, triangular effect. So I'm going to make the branch. I'm going to do that with ink. I'm going to use my flow brush. I'm going to come in from the side. Create a nice branch. <coughs> Excuse me, a little bent. Press hesitate. You're off the page. We can't see you. Oh, sorry, Alice. Thank you. Okay, so move that a little bit. Goodness, let me hesitate for the minute, I'll pause. So I'm putting in a branch here. Um, it's very well loaded, but it's dry. And that gives me that flying white look. I'm going to switch to my fine line brush and I'm going to create groupings of needles. So at the end of the um, branch, I might do some that are uh, full clocks. So here's the dot to represent where um, I start and stop. Just come out like that and use a piston action to move my brush. And I'm overlapping a bit and trying to give each needle its own character. And over here, I might want to do just a half fan, not that whole wheel shape. Make some longer and some shorter. Some darker and some lighter.
and having it in a loose triangular shape. And if you want to, you can come in with some green behind this. Or you can just leave it in black and white. We have some pine needles peeking out here and going off the paper. So I'm going to show you, I like having color. I'm going to turn my paper over and take a clean brush and have a watery green. I'm using my large companion colors, mixing two colors of green and this dabbing behind My paper. In a pattern. It's a little bit um, triangular shape. And you can even put some color where you haven't painted in some needles too. So when we turn it over, it looks very muted. Oh my goodness, my 